So, Addy, what do you exactly mean by uncomfortable? I guess I'm going to find out. <laughs> Fresh, we wouldn't make anybody uncomfortable, would we? Uh, I mean, I, I'm not sure we have the girth to make people uncomfortable. <laughs> we can make them uncomfortable because they feel bad for our lack of girth. That, that's true. That's true. Like I, like, I really applaud your effort, but I'm really not getting much out of this. Don't cry. Stop crying. Stop crying, Fresh 03. <laughs> Fetal position fresh. That's your. That was your name, wasn't it? That's right. That's right. Like he, he, like he's easy. Like you, you won't even notice. He, you won't even notice he's up to anything, and he'll pay for dinner. <laughs> it's like having those little gnats on you that you don't feel, but you wake up the next morning with little bumps all over the place. That's right. That's right. Just little little love nips. Yep. See, I had something to say if you guys started making me a little uncomfortable. I was gonna say, hey guys, guess what? I really like pancakes, you know, Aunt Jemima, Bisquick, um, Buttermilk, Buckwheat, and TFA. How do you feel about pancake titties, though, Eddie Tooney? Oh, they're the best. There you go. There you go. I've never developed a taste for pancake titties. No, I'm not, I'm not all that big on pancake titties. I like uh, silver dollar nipples. You like silver dollar nipples? Yeah. Anyway, let's start the show. We'll talk more about this in a couple of seconds. <laughs> Woo! -hoo. Live everybody, ignition. Welcome, fresh from the kitchen. This is one hundred. No, this is fifty six, not one hundred fifty six. Fifty six. Fifty six, and uh, we have a really special show for you guys tonight. Tonight, well, let me just say, in the realm of special guests, there is nobody more special to the DIY community than the gentleman <laughs> sitting right here, Mr. Attitude. Welcome to Shradi. Oh, thanks, guys. The godfather of vaping himself. <laughs> <laughs> There's Han Lick and then Addy Tooney. That's pretty much it. That's, I'm just yep. putting it out there. <laughs> uh, I consider Rin Vapes a, the, the godmother of DIY. Well, her and Jennifer Jarvis got together in a in a garage somewhere and invented DIY together. Yep. <laughs> Between those two, they created DIY. Like, like Hong didn't even have an idea about e-liquid. He was just like, whatever looked kind of oily he was just dropping it on there and jennifer jarvis and and rin vapes went in and straightened him out but what the the man who brought the the total picture together that was addy tooney <laughs> he looked here he looked here and he took that clay and just molded it together and it was like what that's right perfection so, yeah. so on the show sometimes from time to time and lately we've had a couple special guests um i think for at least for me because this show is really <clears throat> documenting sort of a journey and it's not just my journey because we're all on this journey together and I think the community plays a big part in why I love DIY and also why I, I really enjoy doing the show and also meeting fresh years back now and meeting mm -hmm. uh you know Tooney was always you know a part of my my introduction with fresh entered so many other people in there but when you come around when you watch videos when you go on Instagram and you comment and you go to shows and you interact with people and you develop relationships, there's one name that always pops up in everything. And that's mm -hmm. this gentleman, Addy Tooney. So we're gonna sort of, for those of you that are sort of maybe new to the scene or maybe you've been around for a while and you don't have a relationship with him, uh, you don't watch Fresh's shows or maybe you do and you don't know who he is, um, this time tonight is gonna be getting to know this gentleman a little bit more intimate than maybe he's even comfortable talking about. Mm -hmm. and uh and he can turn off his camera at any moment because nobody's forced to stay here and uh hopefully we'll get to know a little bit more about fresh's history too because i think that's sort of the connection that i'm looking forward to hearing about i want to hear yeah. about the beginnings i want to hear about the start 
how things began for each and each, each of you and also how you met each other and, and everything in between. So uh, also Fresh is with us this evening. I didn't even say hello to him. Hi, Fresh. Hey, Brian. What's up? What up? One of my favorite people on the planet, Eddie Tooney, in case anybody, in case anybody didn't know that I was a Eddie Tooney fanboy. I'm wearing my Eddie Tooney t-shirt. I love you, Fresh. <laughs> I love you too, Eddie so Tooney. awesome finally getting to meet you. It was surreal. Yeah. It really it was. was. It, it, really, it really was. Like, like, I'm just sitting there, like, wandering around the convention, and someone's like, Addy's here. I just took off. I'm like, he's back at the tables. <laughs> <laughs> when, when was that? Uh, that Detroit, was Detroit last year. We met you. Oh, so we all met each other for the first time at the same place? Yeah. yeah. In per yeah, actually meeting in person. Like Addy Tooney was, if not, he was one of the very first people that that said anything on my channel to me about about what I was up to, and a lot of people in the a lot of people in the end a lot of people in this side of the house, the vapor viewing side of the house, they have kind of a similar story that Addy Tooney was one of the first people that would jump into your videos and say something really nice. And he would encourage you to go on and encourage you to, you know, just kind of branch out and do. And he's like, hey, you know, you said you had this atomizer. What's this build? And, you know, uh, are you familiar with this build? Could you throw that in there? You know, I'm, I haven't seen a lot of videos on that. That'd be awesome. And so for, yeah, Addy Tooney was like, it was first or second video. Addy Tooney started commenting on my on my videos and just been downhill ever since. Right, Addy Tooney? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, but but Remy Johnson's still around, so that's awesome. Yeah, she's just a teacher in China. That's 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 who that's the connection right there is the uh, Austra uh, the Australian vape goddess herself, Remy yep. Johnson. So Addie Tooney, give us a little bit of so we know that you jumped into Fresh's videos in video one or two, and Fresh has been around for a few years now. Give us a little history about your journey to find vaping, and like how did that start? Give us the beginning, the early stages. My, um, it's a pretty interesting story. My mom was going in for hip replacement. And um, so I took her to her general practitioner for, um, to get the okay for the surgery. And the nurse said, you know, we need you to quit smoking at least two weeks before the surgery. And I, and I could see the look on my mom's face and the nurse said, take your mom to the vape shop. So that's how it all started got you know we got her uh an ego battery and, and a little ego tank and um it was four days and she hasn't had a cigarette i'm like oh my god you know my mom smoked for 50 years so mm -hmm. i'm like well shit if she can do it i can surely i can surely do it <laughs> so four days later i i get one myself and then my um my wife says, well, I suppose you want me to quit. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not the boss of you. You know, I, I, please do give it a try. But so then two days later, we're back at the shop and, and it all snowballed and we all, we all transitioned right over. So once you transitioned, like give us a run through of the early stages. So you got these egos, you got set up at the shop. Obviously the shop was helpful yeah. in, in helping figure this shit out. Right. Cause yeah. Yeah. So, Cause it was new to me. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm mechanically inclined and electrically inclined, so I understood it all, but it was just all, you know, e-liquid. I didn't know what was in it. I'd... So it wasn't long before I wanted to make my own e-liquid, you know, but there wasn't a lot of information on the Internet. You know, there was like um, some of the forums and stuff. There wasn't, you know, much ELR, didn't have many recipes, didn't have any there wasn't anybody on uh, YouTube doing it, you know? Yeah. Um, what year was, was this, by the way? 13. 2013? Yeah. Right, Fresh? Pretty sure it was 13. Yeah, it would have been right around 13. I mean, there yeah. was Bizarro. There was Grim Green. Um, Indoor Smokers. Yeah. I Get You 69. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I Get You 69 was still around. Yeah, no still DIY. Around. So um, I found another shop a couple weeks later and i got to know him and he was a super nice guy uh, niagara mist vapors in niagara falls which is kind of a pretty catchy name um and i was asking him all these questions about diy and he goes come on back i'll show you how to do it so that was my introduction to diy it was a vape shop owner showing me how to make my own e-liquid he was nice enough to do that 
and um, <coughs> then it was just all creating after that. And, and you know, then I then I found Fresh, and we hit it off, mm -hmm. and I sent him some uh, some Addy's <laughs> custard. <laughs> And he was afraid to vape it because we didn't really know each other that you know that much. And he thought he was going to be riding his bike, and PCP was going to pop out of the. <laughs> yeah, I thought I, I, you know, you get suspicious in today's society. Um, and I, I really did not know Addy Tooney at that point. He just said, "Hey, you know, I mod out K funds. Would you be interested?" When I was like, "Fuck yeah, dude! I love it. I love a K fund. K funds are fucking delicious." So. Before we jump ahead to the K-Fun, because I think that's like sort of how you popped into my life and a lot of people's lives, I think, the uh, admiration for the almighty Addy Tooney K-Fun. Uh, you're new vapor, you got this ego, and you're a typical dude that is not satisfied with just accepting what is given to you, and you saw room for improvement. You also saw yeah. the ability to tailor your vape to the way you wanted it. So you're sitting in the shop, and here's this employee that's mixing – e-liquid right for the shop juice right. yeah and he didn't know how to build so we kind of we kind of learned how to build together but back there there was only like the i go w you know there wasn't yeah. really much to build on it kind of sucked anyway and um how did you even know what wire to get how to make what a coil looked like how did you learn all that yeah. stuff so i found rip trippers and he he kind of taught me how to build so i was um in fact i had when i was <laughs> I didn't start off easy. I started off rebuilding ego coils, you know, with, with 28 gauge and it wow. was not, not an easy task. So when you start out like that, I guess everything else is kind of a little easier, <laughs> <laughs> but it, I'm sure his videos are still out, you know, 564 drill bit, you lay it across, you know, eight or nine reps at 28 gauge. And, <laughs> but, um, so then, you know, with the egos, there wasn't, the only RTA was the K foot and the draw was a little too tight for me. So I started drawing stuff out and then the vapor wasn't enough. So I got to a point where the resistance was so low, it wouldn't feed that. So then, you know, on and on bigger juice channels, holes in the barrel. <laughs> now, did you have okay. any machining experience before that? Like, how did you, were you just like a garage guy that did stuff or? Yeah. Garage guy. Yep. And just not afraid to start fucking with stuff, right? Yeah. Wow. Because you know, at that point, you could, you could get a bunch of parts. You know, fast tech was just starting to come around, so you could practice a lot before you did anything to your ninety dollar uh, Fomesto K one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember, you know. So, I, I, and I and I hate being hesitant, but I just want to say that. Sometimes in life you come across certain people and none of us are saints, but I'll tell you what, there's some people that for whatever reason, for whatever stories they have in their, in their past, some people are just really come off as selfless, giving, helpful, and uh, humble. And usually life creates that, you know, so whatever the reason is, Addy, I just want to say that when you contacted me and I was a really small channel at that time, um, it, first of all, it made me feel special, and in this world, to be feeling special from somebody else um, is is something that's amazing. And uh, it also makes you want to do it for other people and give back. And I think that's sort of like how this shit works, right? Right. Uh, and uh, so, wh wh how did the whole attitude K fun thing start? So you were enjoying it, and you said to yourself, "Like, I really like this. Take a look at this, guys." And people seemed interested. How did that whole? Yeah, because so you know, like at that time. It was before the Nautilus. It was before the Atlantis, you know. Um, so there, w there wasn't many options. So I would just, to try to help people with, you know, uh, that weren't getting enough vape, you know, that were thinking about going maybe back to cigarettes, you know, I would just pass it around. And I was really lucky because my, my parents were super nice and giving and plus growing up in the 70s, you know, that didn't help, you know, love peace and <laughs> flowers and all that crap <laughs> yeah that's uh addy, addy free love toonie right there that's right <laughs> in more I ways than my, one i got my grateful dead shirt on <laughs> yeah you do <laughs> that's a dope one that's a wizard of oz 
Yeah. It's very cool. Did I ever tell you, Fresh, that I got arrested at a Grateful Dead concert when I was in high school? How did you get arrested? Two nights in a row. Oh, damn. Pub- public, public drunkenness. Oh, intox- okay. Yeah, public intoxication. I was also under the age, obviously. Um, there was a lot of undercover cops in the Philadelphia parking lots of the Grateful Dead shows. And I live in a suburb, so we had trains that went to the city. So you can get in as much trouble as you wanted to. And anytime you heard there was a party, well, I also took well, mushrooms that were spray painted with blue spray paint on the caps. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid kids. Shakedown Street. Ain't nothing like Shakedown Street, huh, Brian? Phew. I'll tell you, but you get good grilled cheese. No doubt about that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I had, I, I, we won't get into it tonight, but let's just say I enjoyed myself when I was younger. Um, so, so Dylan wanted to know if I ever messed with um, Jenny's. Yeah, yeah, I did the whole Jenny route. Wow, I see. I think they're so sexy. Like looking back at like a retro vape like that, <clears throat> they're just so pretty. Let's can yeah, you hold that up to the camera? Yeah, gorgeous and expensive, and uh, <laughs> it looks like a drip the tip. Worst, the worst dry head of your life. Yeah, there's no drip tip on it. <laughs> No, that, that was using mesh wire for the for the wicks. Yeah, but yeah, yeah worst dry hit of your life. You would just you just wanted to die. Yeah, well, that's why like for the 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 new mesh RDAs that have come out recently, and I've tested a few of them. It's the best vape ever until it's the worst vape of your life. Oh. <laughs> it's like you're in heaven and all of a sudden, like, you know, hell just grabs you by the ankles and just rips you down through the fire. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, the, the cleanest Christmas flavor, and then all of a sudden metal just burns you the inside of your throat, you know? Yeah. Yep. And there was a lot of that. Like, I remember in the early stages when Mike Vapes first started his channel and he started the whole hit that shit thing, that my catchphrase was dry hit that shit. Because the old story goes that I was the motherfucker that could dry hit temperature control. Because I dry hit everything. It was just because I wanted more. Like, I loved nicotine, I guess, and I wanted vapor production. And I was, like, ahead of the, like, six months ahead mentally to what was capable of happening with vaping. And uh, my wicking skill wasn't good. And sub coils weren't holding up to the to their end of the bargain. And as soon as you started getting that satisfied vape, you know, help, death came knocking. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I, I look at it. Fast forward a couple of years, now you got one of the most famous RDAs in the market that works amazing. It's, you know, I miss the simpler times, but boy, we live in some good times. I'll tell you. Yeah, it's, it's all a matter of perspective, and it's important that you keep people around you to keep you humble and. And help you recognize like what's really why you did it, why you're doing it, and what it's all about. And uh, it's always mattered to me then, and it still matters the same to me now. And I'm just some fucking dude in the basement that quit smoking and is grateful. I mean, that's what that's what it's always been about. That's what it is about today. And uh, and that's what you were about, and that's what Fresh was about, and is about. And that's that's the connection in the community, man. I mean, simple, simple. I, I, now there is. On my end, it's challenging sometimes because, you know, obviously financially, you know, money is a motivator for people. Mm-hmm. And and you, for most of us that have to pay a mortgage and have food to put on our tables and all that kind of stuff. So I don't think it necessarily changes the person, but it changes the person's motivation in different directions. The, the core yeah. person underneath it all, if you were to strap all that away, is still, you know, the same person. But... Um, you see opportunity and, you know, life is unpredictable and you want to seize opportunity and seize the moment. But I think you can have both. I think you can have a good balance for doing the right thing for the right reasons and also get reimbursed as long as it delivers what you say it does. You know what I mean? Right. That's the key. It's, yeah. it, when you really shit that doesn't do what you say it does, doesn't deliver and you just put your name on it, then that's a way to embarrass yourself. And as long as you're having fun doing it, you know. And I'm sure you learned learned a lot, you know, about distribution and manufacturing, and you, those are great life lessons, you know. Yep. So you, though, having watched Fresh, having watched my channel, having been involved in in really don't just make pa- me pick. Don't make me pick. No, no, I would never do that. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who's who's your favorite? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 
Um, I'd win. <sighs> how do you ha- like? You're sitting here tonight in, in the, this moment of realization of all that was and all that is today. You've probably seen lives change tons of lives because I, I mean, I know you watch us, but how many more things? How many people are you connected with? How many people do you watch? I, I don't know. I'm subscribed to so many channels. I, I can't keep up anymore. Vaping's got so big that I kind of lost touch with a lot of people. Yeah, because it's it's too much. Yeah, it's like having a big extended family, and then that family just keeps extending, and you can't even keep up yeah. with everybody. Even though you love everyone, it's just hard to put the time in. Yeah, yeah. So you you just hope that they have somebody to help them and and keep them grounded. You know. Is there anything that you see that you can pick out when you're watching like a new channel and say that that person's definitely going to be able to do this or this person's definitely not going to be able to do this or no, it's just random. Yeah. You, I mean, there are personalities. Usually within the first, first couple episodes, you, you see their personalities like, yeah, yeah. And, and you can spot the people that are just in it for the fame and the, and the, recognition and free shit yeah yeah <laughs> people thinking starting to starting a youtube channel you're gonna get free shit <laughs> you got another thing coming <laughs> and anymore if, if you don't involve some advocacy and yeah. on your channel or on your instagram or and you're in the u.s i don't want anything to do with you yeah yeah, I, I caught a lot of flack on like I was. I used to do a lot more reviews, and f- for me, like I caught a lot of flack for trying to put like big advocacy things in the beginning of my videos and also at the end of my videos, and people just didn't get it. And I was like, I wish everyone would open. And, and you know, I, I hate. First of all, there's there's something that happens when you do things for the wrong reasons that you should be shunned about. But when you do things for the right reasons and you're trying to do it to get people's attention, to, to hype people up or to get people motivated, because that's really what advocacy is all about. It's not only like, hey, everybody, this is a problem and you need to step out there and do something. It's like, yo, you need to do this, be excited about it, passionate about it, so you can yeah. you know, light the flame in other people to do the same thing. But there's always that fear of, am I leading people in the right direction? Mm-hmm. Am I educated enough? And am I informed enough to be the spokesperson to be able to provide people with the knowledge in order to make the action? So making those intro videos with the pre-cut just data, but make it entertaining was sort of a way to get both things across without having to put my own foot in my mouth and say, I'm sorry because it wasn't right or it wasn't true, you know, that kind of stuff. Well, even if it was, the intentions were really, really, you know, well done. And you're getting really good at the video stuff really impressed thank you video and the the pictures (laughs) yeah i always every time i I watch the vape team intro i think of us walking down that alley back to the hotel in detroit (laughs) yeah yeah I, i i was telling somebody the other day that you know if if i had one thing that i would like to do it would not be in to be in front of the camera it would be to build up other channels and build up people's brands and build and and produce stuff you know what I mean? Like that's I think that's where my heart is. So Yeah, you would be really good at it. Yeah. Um so as far as DIY goes, because that's sort of where you know, fresh ever since we started this journey on this channel for this show, uh Fresh has always brought your name up time and again. You watch the show, we see you out there in chat. You're on Fresh's show on Saturdays. Um and also you Fridays too, every week, or is that just yeah, usually every week. Yeah. Yeah. And Tuesday and Yeah, I try to um, find the fog Tuesday. And on Tuesday. And so when you do these shows with Fresh and then Fresh comes on this show and he talks about things that happen, he also talks about in the beginning cuz he's sort of like my you know, uh mentor or whatever. Yeah, mentor um teaching me all the basics and stuff like that and he sort of said that you're that person to him. Yeah. How, how how did you when you took it from getting flavors at a vape shop, where did you start to, to sort of look into picking up flavors from different vendors? How did you test things? How did you know what you were putting in? How much? Where did that all, was, all that base come it from? It was easy for me because um, I had that, that vape shop owner, take, you know, take me by the hand and lead me through. Like, 
you know, percentages and, uh, you know, this is where I get some flavors. And so then I, I just dove in head first and, you know, there wasn't all the um, online flavoring shops that there is now. So you had to go, you know, right to Flavor West. You had to go to um, My Freedom Smokes was just starting to sell some flavorings. and But, you know, it, okay, so I had a lot of mistakes, you know. <laughs> I threw a lot of e-liquid away, but still, I didn't. I had some support, and I and I got lucky with a lot of recipes. Were they more simple at first, like single? Like you would get strawberry in the mail and just try strawberry, and that was like a strawberry vape to you, or did you I realize? Was, yeah, very... I think like my first was like probably a strawberry lemonade, you know, and then a, a blueberry went in there, and then it wasn't long until I came up with. Um, Eddie's Custer. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing recipe. What neck level were you vaping at then? I was down to uh, six. I started off at 24 and I went back two days later and it was just way too much for me. So I did 18. And, and it was, it's funny because my mom got down to zero and then she just stopped vaping altogether and she didn't even need it. So both the wife and I now are at 1.5. Sweet. Yeah, that's kind of nice because you can feel the three. Yeah, when you want it. Yeah. Yeah. I find that with Nick Salts, like, there's a different feeling it gives me and a different satisfaction, and I like to go between them sometimes. It's, it's like almost like two different things. Almost like it was a... But it's the, it's, yeah. the, it's the feeling. Oh, in okay. The, in the throat and in the lungs that you got <clears> when you smoked, like, that harshness, I guess you could say. I don't know. There's something still about that addictive part of it that still gets me. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, but I but I can vape zero and still get satisfaction from the flavor and from the vapor production and things like that. So it's not yeah. just about that for me. It's sort of a, a split between the two. Um, so as far as your e-liquid consumption now, cause, you know, you mix. You have. T I mean, I have two of Ad Addy Tooney's recipes that he sent me, and. They're fucking delicious. So what percentage of the liquid that you vape today is stuff that you make yourself, and what percentage is stuff that you actually buy? Um, well, I, I buy a lot because I like to support, you know, some of the friends I made along the way. And plus, you know, a lot of it's so freaking excellent that you, you can't not buy it. You know what I mean? Like all of Dawn's stuff. Um, I was joking around with you before the show, but this stuff, this stuff's freaking amazing. You know, you guys did such an awesome job on that. I give all credit to Dawn on that. That's all her skill. Yep. You look yeah. when the year, this came out in 16? Like the end of 16? Uh, yes. End yeah, of 16, this was, like this was November this, November ish, 2016. Yeah, the another strawberry vape was probably my favorite, probably my favorite liquid of. of of 16 by a long yeah. shot and that macadamia is like freaking fire man it's so freaking good yeah there's you know there's a bunch of people i like to support and their e-liquids are amazing like anything that amanda makes you know anything that that jenner um jen jarvis makes yeah she's a she's a crazy good mixer yeah um the mix and vixens have been killing it it was a Still great show. Wise. Great show on Sunday. I yeah. had so much fun. Someone, someone, someone supposedly, supposedly successfully used Flavor West cookie butter in a recipe. <laughs> uh. I'll be the ju I'll be the judge of that exclusive girl. <laughs> Somebody's getting called out. Uh, I actually, I'm I'm really excited if she figured out how to make it work. Fuck yeah, I, I've got something I can use it for. <laughs> <laughs> She's got that look fresh. I don't know. She's she got that intense look. I bet she. Well, she vapes at like 180 watts. So yeah. <laughs> How about that that feeling that you get when you build a relationship with somebody? You watch them grow, and <clears throat> all of a sudden they come out with an e-liquid line, or they come out with a product, and not only do you love them and are happy that they came out with it, but you get it, and you're just like, what? Like it actually delivers. Like it, it, I think that feels just as good as doing it yourself. Like it's just a really rewarding feeling, watching that success with people you care about. Yeah, I agree. 
Well, you, you know uh, Vinyl and Vapor, right? Yeah. The guy Hell up. yes. Oh, my God. So this, good. Uh, Dragon, Dragon Shake? Holy shit. It's amazing. Yep. Yeah, I was hanging out with him uh, in Brooklyn when I was at the oh, Vape cool. Expo like two weeks ago. And, you know, a lot of times I watch what people are doing first and I see their involvement, I see what they're posting, what they're saying, and you sort of get a vibe for somebody, and then to meet them in person and actually have time to step up, because I, I, I hate big groups, because I, I can't, I get overwhelmed, and I can't focus on what I find important, and that's real conversations one-on-one. I love that connection. And like with, with him, it was like me at DigiFlavors booth, and I could step away, and we spent like, you know, a good 15 minutes just actually talking, and, uh, it was it was really really cool, and then he gave me samples of the of the liquid, and to be able to try it, it was just really really neat. He's an amazing you get guy. Out that dragon shake, because sometimes I get like a Neapolitan, and then other times I get like a strawberry dragon fruit ice cream, and then it it's like constantly changes. It's I love liquid like that that keeps changing. Yeah, the dragon fruit. I'm not like a huge dragon fruit. Uh, I don't have a palate that is aware of that flavor, so that's sort of what was neat about it because it catches me off guard and it's like well what is that because it's not something i'm familiar with you know yeah oh, he did an excellent i can't wait to meet him someday he's, he's like super interesting very he's interesting bar, recovered alcoholic that's a bartender was a bartender <laughs> yeah. uh, a lot of those guys exist though but yeah he's a really really cool guy if everybody hasn't checked out vinyl and vapor um, really, really cool guy over on Instagram. He's got his own e-liquid line. Um, it's only two flavors, but Eddie Tooney swears up and down that they're awesome, and I can't, I can't wait. I can't wait to try them. Really good. Yeah, I love them. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Brian, what's are you, you ever going to come up with another um, e-liquid recipe? If I do, it would be something that is my own from scratch, and it's something that I feel is so good that I want to share it with everyone. And uh, then there would be the decision, like, how to get it done? Do I have the time? Do I have the capability? Do I want to? Um, you know, all that kind of stuff has to come into play. Because you got to be careful what you what you decide to put on your plate because you got to eat it. Right. You know, well, you I'm going to... Hmm? You still have the dungeon in the basement with that guy locked up down there, right? Teach him how to DIY and... Yeah, but he's into this whole S&M thing. Like, I gave him one cuff for the right arm and then he's like he's like he wanted to be hang up by his legs and his hands and I was just like I don't know. Yeah. Kinda hard to mix like that I guess. Yeah. <laughs> he's become more in the way than anything, but Yeah, how do you control drops with your butt cheeks? Exactly. <laughs> That's all exactly. I wanted to know. Um people people have been asking out there, Addy Tooney, um they're very curious as to as to why you still mix with drops. And I, I, I kinda know the answer, but if you want to Elaborate a little I, bit. It's how I learned the. It's really accurate. The cleanup is nothing. Yeah, it I'm, does. I'm, it does take longer, but it is really accurate. It is a really accurate way to to mix. Yeah, I'm comfortable with it. Yeah. And you find the level of consistency is just on point. Yep. Cool. Yeah, once you know how many drops are in a milliliter, it's it's bam. Well, it's also Hello? like. It's also like like the way you tie your shoes. I mean, try to change that up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, for good luck. Right. <laughs> when you do things a certain way and you do it well, it's really hard to change those old behaviors. So, And if it works for you and it works well, why change it? Yeah. And I had a scale, and it's, it's fine. It's great. I mean, whatever works for you. That's one of the beautiful things about DIY is there's really no 100% right way to do things it's what works for you you know if you find a flavor that works for you i mean stick with it stick with well, it like, i love being called prehistoric i love it <laughs> that's right addy tuning is prehistoric pipettes <laughs> so if you were to pick one recipe that you've made ever i hate these questions but if you were to mm -hmm. pick one ever what would be your personal best creation that you like the most that you think is your favorite I think the one I sent you, the uh, strawberry biscuit. Strawberry biscuit. Yeah, I like that one a lot. I've been I've been vaping that for months now. Usually I vape something a couple months and I'll either change it or try something else. Or but 
I like that one a lot. Then Addie's custard. Oh, I'm I'm working on another Addie's custard, like a modern. Oh. Version. Hmm. But it, fresh, fresh, fresh just lit up. <laughs> like, wait a minute, wait a minute, a, a new Addie's custard. Wait a minute. Yeah, so it's not ready yet, though. I was hoping I could release it for you know on on your show, but I can't tell what's going to be yet. The cornbread creme brulee, kiwi and, and custard. It just takes too many days before you know for sure. Yeah. Woke Very me cool. up. I'm so always I, awake when Addie Tooney's around. What are you talking about? I just absorb the knowledge that Addie Tooney drops. <laughs> Fresh done grabbed the pebbles out of my hand uh, a couple years ago. Like, like the, if anybody, yeah, like if anybody's wondering about where I got started on DIY, you're looking at that guy right there. Like he sent me. He sent me that K fund filled with his DIY e liquid, and I was like, as soon as I started vaping, and I started bugging him to get some more, <laughs> and he just gave me the recipe. And I was, like, what? What do you mean? I can just make it myself? Are you talking about Addy Tooney? <laughs> <laughs> so fresh. Yeah, that Addy, the- that Addy's custard at the at the like that's for a first experience for DIY. Like that shit was just amazing. I could not believe how good that liquid was. Like it just it hit everything for me. It was a custard. It had the it had a ripe fruit combination for me. the The flavor was on point. It was just sweet enough without being overly sweet. Still had some tartness to it. It was fucking amazing. I had to. I had to. I had that. I had that Addy Tooney K fun. I'm sitting there just watching the watching the level drop. I'm like, I got. I got. I got to hold out. I got to <laughs> hold out. And and I want to thank you just for that tribute because of the recipe you came up with and you named it after me and and I never really did thank you for that. Oh, that was that was your idea of a combination, Addy Tooney, and I just I just threw Greek Greek yogurt at it. And said good enough. Yeah, but, you uh, you tweaked it up nice and it came out amazing. And you've raised thousands for advocacy too. That was that's the best part about that recipe is how much money it's raised for for advocacy. So. And, uh, you know, Fluent and now Don is, was, you know, wonderful people to give their time to help out too. Yeah. And then nobody, that's the great thing about that recipe is nobody, nobody makes any money off of it for Addie's yogurt. The one shot that I have, nobody makes any money off of it. All the money goes to advocacy. Like I, everybody always asks, you know, why aren't you going to start your own juice line? You should talk to Addie Tooney. Why doesn't Addie Tooney start a juice line? Cause he's. It just gives it out, and that's Addy. Addy taught me, and I'm the I I'm I just do what Addy I just do what Addy does, and you just give it you just give it away, give it away to people, and you know it's that's the great thing about DIY. You know you can you can teach a person to fish, you know you can get you can give them a little piece of piece of fish right at the start, but you know you teach them to fish, and then their journey begins on DIY. Next thing you know, they've got a juice line coming out, and you're like, well that that got out of hand in a hurry, didn't it? <laughs> but you know, it's funny when, you know, I, when I help Fresh and then I found Rin and I thought, you know, Fresh and Win, Rin would be a great match. Never did I ever dream that we would end up being good friends and being on shows together. And I never yeah. even foresaw anything like that. Fresh yeah, sent look- me a HD camera and said, you're coming on my show, Aiden Tooney. I'm like, oh, fuck. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, that was, that was, that was one of the best purchases I ever made. I was, I was like, Addy Tooney said, he said, if he had a web camera, he would come on one of my shows. I was like, Oh, really? <laughs> it's like Addy Tooney's getting a web camera. And then, I mean, it's, it's been really cool to watch like everybody that's been involved kind of in our, our little, our little circle that we've created. Um, just everybody's kind of expanding and, and growing constantly. Like Rin's, Rin's got the mix and vixens now. She's one of the main. She's one of the main people on that, and she's just you know she's just, everybody's just grown and doing their own thing, and you know people come and go from the all the different DIY shows we've done, um, but like me, Ren and Addy, and and now Giz have all just kind of all been hanging out on the DIY show for forever at this point. Yeah, on the Saturday show, and it's it's been great, and you know you see you see people out in the comments, um, people out in the comments that you know they start their own channels, and sure enough. One of the first people over on that channel, Addie Tooney, encouraging them, like, "Hey, that mix sounds really awesome. What do you think about this?" And then, you know, constantly encouraging growth. And that's one of the things I absolutely love about Addie Tooney. It's just, 
he's nonstop giving to everybody in this community. He doesn't, he never stops. Like I, I've, I'm always amazed. Like I'll sit there and, you know, I'll be chatting with someone, you know, between shows about something They're like, yeah, Eddie, Eddie sent me this or Eddie, you know, gave me this suggestion. It worked out incredibly. I'm like, you know, Eddie to me too. Like, that's just fucking amazing. <laughs> Megan says, open the door. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, you know, we're talking about somebody that gives so much and we could flip the script and talk about somebody that takes so much. And that would be Mark. <laughs> So if we want to have like a compare and contrast of two different people, we could have Mark on. But no, I think, and like you said, I think personalities make everything. And I think that all of us have something special to bring the community in one way or another. Some of us are organizers. Some of us are promoters. Some of us are salespeople. Some of us are, you know, uh, really technical when it comes to like hardware and making things. Some of us are just really good at loving people and caring for people or support. You know, there's just, we all have a part to play. Yeah. Hugs for everyone. And that's right. Early on, like, you know, I started with Mike and with Mark and with a whole group of people and, and, you know, I met fresh and then we started connecting and then, you know, past sort of cross like ships in the night sometimes, but every once in a while you get to sort of dock up with people. And that's why this show was such a cool opportunity because Fresh yeah. and I could sort of reconnect weekly yeah. and and bridge some of the hardware community with some of the DIY liquid community because sometimes it's like two separate islands. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, and I think that all of us sort of know one another or p- cross paths from time to time. But there's just so much – there's so much love, man. It's a lot yeah. of love, a lot of good and people. So much, and so much knowledge. I mean, yeah. like on Fresh's Saturday show, it's like – the our family and chat, just the knowledge they have is just amazing. I mean, anybody has a question, it, it's going to get answered. You're going to get five different answers and they're all going to be amazing answers. Yep. It's, you know, it's like vape team too, hardware wise. It's like, you know, you guys have so many connections now that whatever problem you come up with, it's, it's going to get solved. Yep. And, and everyone sort of brings different things to the table. That's why there's so many channels with so many different focuses. And that's why when somebody always asks me, like, Brian, if you were going to start doing something, what would it be? What would you recommend? And I would say, whatever you're good at, whatever your strength is, whatever's natural for you, do that. Don't try to do that. Don't try to be Mike Vapes. Don't try to be, you know, because then you're just going to be a copy and a clone. And there's already a great Mike Vapes to begin with. So why do you need to be him? Be you. Create Mike Vapes like Mike created him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or create Fresh with his personality and his ability to be the coordinator and his ability to care for people and to show up you know, every single time for a show and always be that chipper person that's going to you know, be supportive and lift people up and introduce <laughs> people to the community and you know, all that kind of stuff. I know I, that I he's talking shit, right? Mike Vapes sitting back on the couch being awkward with no hat on. <laughs> Everybody starts somewhere, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That dude just ripping the clouds <laughs> over on his couch. That's why I think it's hilarious when I see people like talking shit or saying things or acting like people like, you know, certain people don't know what it's like. Dude, they know exactly what it's like cuz they were you. And the yep. only reason they're not where you're at is time and effort. That's it. Yep. That's it. You know, Mike Babe yeah. sat on that couch every single day doing the yep. lean back, doing the matchy matchy day after day, week after week, buying, month after month. Buying hardware, buying all that stuff. Yep. Yep. And the time. It's fucking hours and hours and hours every single day committing your life to something for exactly. years. And that's how it happens. There's no replacement for that. So. So what do you think about those florals? I know Fresh sent you a floral to try or you mixed up your own floral. I think it's something, it's an experience for me. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's something I can, exp- like I ate uh, raw duck once, right? And it was a smoked duck and it was raw. And it was chewy and it was an experience. But what is it something that I would choose to do every day? Not for me. You know, but it was cool. Yeah. You know? I found myself sitting outside this morning drinking green tea, vaping a green tea vape. I was like, you bougie motherfucker. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, we really can't say enough about the, about the community and just how amazing everybody is. And yeah, it's, I don't know. 
I don't know. And um, Addy Tooney, Addy Tooney is just one of those. He's a, he's like a he's like a backbone to the community. He's a, he's helped so many people in this in this community that you know I don't think there's enough thank yous going around for Addy Tooney. Like I well, always, I, you know, it, <clears throat> I just love the friendships we made, and mm -hmm. I, I never saw that really coming. I was just trying to help people, and now it's like. I look forward to hanging out in the chat and hanging out with you guys. And it's just, I'm looking forward to Detroit so much, you know, to meet, meet all these guys face to face. How does your wife feel about it? She's coming. There you she, go. I, I'm super lucky. She just wants me to be happy. That's love, right? Yep. Mrs. Tooney's pretty, she's a pretty cool gal. <laughs> <laughs> she's just yelling down. You one lucky lady. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, she doesn't. Right, to, she doesn't. She to, knows. She knows. She doesn't want to be with you, unhappy, not doing what you love. Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah. Not everybody cool. has that. Not everybody has that. So, the wrench is out that there. Time I think was when the owl popped in the back window. So you got that too. Oh no, no doubt about it. I feel like the, every day I wake up, I was actually. Should I? I'll share it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I was sitting on my couch about f five o'clock or whatever, and Amy was coming over from work, and we were going to check to see if there was any rats because we've had a huge rat problem in our house the past like month and a half. And uh, I'm not ashamed to say it. Like my wife is like tough. She's a fighter. She's a trooper. She's also feminine and loving and nurturing and all the things you want in a in a partner, but. I'm sitting there and I'm watching like a Netflix special on heart attacks because I'm getting older and I'm, you know, I, I'm, I don't know why the fuck I press play on this, but like there was a, there was a call and they were talking about how to avoid heart attacks. And there was a call of a guy that had a heart attack and his wife, it was real, it was live like recording and she was pumping on his chest on 911 and you could hear like that love and that loss and that fear and all that kind of stuff. And like, I think about that, not losing, but like the, just that fucking connection with another human being. And uh, I think that I wish that for everybody, man. I wish that for everybody on the planet because it's special yeah. when you have it. And when you see it, you know it. Yeah. So. So baby aspirin every night. That'll help. <laughs> Brian's sensitive segment. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. That's that's life, man. That's yeah. I'm a passionate human being, man. I'm heart. I, I live with my heart, and I feel a lot of feelings, and and uh, it's just the, the way I'm built. So, but I also feel yeah, the that, same I mean, way about the friendships that I have. I feel that way about my parents. I feel that way about my neighbors. You know, if you're not feeling, you got to work on that. Yeah. You know? So. Because all of us, I think, not all of us. I mean, obviously, if there's mental imbalance and chemical imbalances and stuff like that, uh, but a lot of us suppress that because we're afraid of rejection or we're afraid of getting hurt. We're afraid of exposing our weaknesses, our flaws. We have an ego and all this, you know, kind of stuff, and all that stuff blocks the true you. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. And that was one of the really cool things is making a connection with someone like Addy, especially like when as early in my sobriety as I probably was at that point. I was probably only like a year into it. And, you know, even at a year, you're still a shaky motherfucker about about just, you know, everything. Like, is this going to cause me to relapse? You know, can I hang out with these people or, you know, are these people really my friends? Does this someone does this person want something from me that I can't give them? You know, you're always you're always real. You're always really. uh always really hesitant about everything which obviously you know uh my story about eddie tooney sent me that liquid and i got really really sketchy about it i was like this dude just sent me some e-liquid that he mixed up at his fucking house like he mixed that up in his toilet or some shit and he put pcp in there and like he just like this guy this guy's just going to on on vape channels and sending them k funds filled with pcp and he just sits back and waits for the local news to pick up this dude running down the street in his underwear <sighs> like that's Got another one, yes. Yeah, exactly. That's what that was. That's the picture in my mind. I had. I had a Addy Tooney. I. I did not have. I did not have the actual Addy Tooney in my mind. And as I got to know him, and uh, because anytime I had a question about something like a build, uh, you know, um, a recipe I was working on, anything, I could just always email Addy Tooney, and within an hour, he he would send me back a message saying, you know, this, this, and this, or I don't know, maybe you should check this out. But he was always willing to help. 
always, always, always willing to help. And I, I took that to heart. I took that to heart because Addy was one of the first real connections I made in the baby community. And, you know, at this point, you know, he, he always jokes that he's my older brother. I'm like, uh, that, that, there's no joke about that. that. That dude's my brother, Addy Tooney right there. He's an amazing person. And I love you, fresh. I love you too, Addy Tooney. I really do. I'm getting a little teary now. It's Here my we turn go. To get Here emotional. we fucking go. Let's do it. <laughs> let's, let's get teary. Let's get teary up in this motherfucker, everybody. Leilani, we need some tears. Let's do some cry contact. I That's right. Fagan cry contact right tonight. Fagan shed a little tear for us. <laughs> That's just because he's pushing too hard when he shits. <laughs> <laughs> he gets those tears in his eyes. That's another dude that you 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 misread him. That dude's got the biggest fucking heart. Good human being. Awesome, awesome, awesome person, and super talented. And the only way he's gotten there, I, I, you know what? I want to do interviews. I think I want to get to the bottom of the people and show the real side that people don't sometimes get when they just watch them on the show, and help them see just the depth that all of us have. Because there's layers, man. There's lots of layers to everybody. And I think people I guess, that I watch want to want to see that stuff. Yeah. I, I love Mark's reviews. He's freaking amazing at reviews. Yep. Amazing. Clear, concise, accurate, thorough, detailed, and he's got an amazing sense of humor. He doesn't take himself too seriously, but he cares about con the quality. And he's uh, his self-deprecation makes you feel more comfortable around him, which is another thing that I enjoy. He's also a pain in the fucking ass. <laughs> I always say, like, if there's one person that I would love to film 24 hours a day and would, to if it didn't entertain anybody, it would entertain the shit out of me. I could <laughs> literally make a reality show that would be the funniest one on TV just following Mark and the way he is. Like, he's so freaking funny. He just makes me smile nonstop. Just thinking about him, like, I could be in my car and I just smile because the shit he does and says. It's amazing. There's your other partner out there. Yep. Mark Todd? That's right. <laughs> I like right, Bacon, too, because he doesn't mind that I always put poodles out after his name. <laughs> oh. Fagan just said, fuck this. Is there another DIY show on? Here, here in a little bit, Noted is on, Mark. If you want to go hang out on the DIY or Die channel. He's the kind of guy that'll put you down to your face and then expect you to take care of him in your own house. <laughs> <laughs> just like a real family member would that's right yep how about angela though she's a freaking sweetheart dude the yep. best well there's it's no uh coincidence that such an amazing woman is with such an awesome dude and same with mike and his wife and just everybody that i know you can this stuff runs deep so like good people have good you know, webs that connect to other things in their life. Everything is, when it's transparent, you can see the truth. People that are liars, that mm -hmm. perpetrate a fraud, they don't show you any of that because they don't want to expose the stuff that needs to be worked on. And they're capable too. They just have to let go of some stuff and make some changes and uh, and be real with everybody. So, yep. So what do you think about the future of DIY? Where do you think we're headed? Because I know we have this whole flavor band that everyone's talking about. And uh, there's a lot of pressure from the government. There's a lot of globally, not just in the United States. Where do you think in the next 12 months, where, where, where is the direction we're heading? I, I think if, if more people don't get in on this comments and more people don't get involved in the advocacy, we're going to have tobacco flavoring and that's going to be it. Unless you DIY. And who knows? I don't know what they're going to do. I don't want to say anything because there, there's ears everywhere, but yeah, there is. it's going to be, unless people, more people get involved, you know, it's all about the big business. It's all about big business. That's what runs the country. Mm -hmm. And it's not just vaping. It's in every no. medical industry. It's in every, oh. every, every, everything. I was telling my dad during lunch today that multinational corporations, global are running shit. And yes. the, the head person in that big seat above all is is the green. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's a sociopath. He doesn't care squat about you or me. Yep. And that greed, that human nature, that that willingness to be so short sighted to meet our own individual needs today, 
to, to make sure that you know every year that this this stock earns and at the top you know people keep taking it's built into all of us so i'm not pointing fingers acting like i'm you know on this island of you know perfection and i'm not capable of the same things but i think that the more we talk about it the more i think most people when they see the impact directly into people's families and into people's lives and they hear the stories and that's why you sharing your stories about flavoring is so important when people can actually feel, taste, and touch that stuff, most of us have a heart and most of us want to do good. We just need the platform and the option to be able to make that choice. And we need to make ourselves visible. We need to be not afraid to talk about our stories. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm hoping for the best. If more people get involved, hopefully <clears throat> we, can, we can save vaping, we can save DIY, we can, we, we can save the community, I hope. I mean, if there's a flavor ban, welcome to the DIY train, everybody. You're already on board. You might want to grab your friends, make sure they got a ticket. <laughs> yeah. I hope that doesn't happen. Me either. Yeah, me too. I hope it doesn't hope happen. They, hope they listen to us. Yep. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't take much effort to get involved, but you don't see it much. Yeah. Yep. So everybody out there, if you haven't gone and commented on the or uh, there's two things, the comment on the FDA, and then there's the uh, the survey, the VTA, CASA. Um, not blowing smoke. Yeah, not blowing smoke survey that uh, Dr. Farsalinas put out. Uh, it's it's in all the, it's in all the uh, Facebook groups. Uh, as far as I'm aware, it got posted in all the different groups. Um, yeah, it's it, all over it it takes It takes a little while to fill out. You know, it's it, they interrogate you about your flavors, but you know, it's, it's worth it. It's worth the time, and all that data is really going to help. Yep. Singer Truth out there. What's Singer. Up? <laughs> he does that so much better than you, Fresh. I know he does. <laughs> <clears throat> I, I, hopefully, hopefully he's coming. Hopefully, him and the misses are coming down to Detroit this know. weekend. Be awesome to run into him again. Definitely. Good cat. He drove us around in his giant truck. So if you guys want to check out uh, Addy Tooney in the flesh, Fresh 03 in the flesh, and uh, tons of other people, uh, this weekend in Detroit, Michigan, mm -hmm. there's a vape expo. You guys can talk about that for a minute. So if people are in that region or want to fly out. We'll be in lovely downtown Detroit. Yep. Don't it's at the uh, Kobo Center. Uh, business to business is Friday and then Saturday and Sunday is open to the public. Um, I think it's the, the tickets aren't much. The tickets are, I want to say it's 40 bucks for the whole weekend. Something like that. Um, you need Don. yeah, Don from Dory liquids going to be there hanging out with us. Uh, there you go. Singer truth is going to be hanging out with us. Uh, oh, Tea vapes is going to be there. Gizzard stew, uh, Rin vapes is going to be there hanging out with us. Daddy's uncle. Yeti's uncle's going to be there hanging out with us. If you if you watched my if you watch my shows, um, pretty much the whole crew's rolling into Detroit. Um, but yeah, a bunch of the Leilani is going to be there. The lovely Leilani is going right. to be in, yep. hanging out with us in downtown Detroit. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I can't I can't wait to go to go sit in a park in downtown Detroit and vape some yam with Leilani. <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> creepy, actually. Yep. <laughs> that was our, the, me and Leilani. Hey, we made an agreement. We had an agreement that when we met each other, we were going to go find a park somewhere and we we're going to sit down and vape some yam together. Cinnamon Crunch yams coming to the little Leilani's way. Heck yeah! Here we go. <laughs> so yeah, it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. Last year, Detroit was just an absolute blast. That's where I got to meet Addie Tooney finally in person. Uh, hugs will be hugs will be given to anybody who comes near me. Uh, for those that didn't know, I do like to hug people a lot. He's a good hugger too. Yes, I will. I will. If you, I will try and break you in half with with my love. Fred come, Fresh comes in for a hug in the handstand position for some reason. I don't understand that, but yeah, just walking on my hands. Yeah, I got to hang out with Brian last year. That was awesome. I wish we had gotten to hang out more, but circumstances was circumstances. They were. <laughs> we we spent some time together though. We we sat and chilled. Yeah. Yeah, that was real. That, I had a lot of fun. Just uh, at one point, me and Brian just kind of sat down at one of the back back tables, and he was doing a build, and I got to we got to chat for a bit. It's a lot of fun. <clears throat> and that's what uh, I was talking yeah. about with with time limitations and to, so many people that you care about and you want to spend time. And everybody, you know, there's only so many hours. 
It's, yeah. it's really tough to give everyone the individual time that you want. And all of a sudden, before you blink, the weekend's over, and you're like, fuck, I didn't spend enough time with this person, with this person. Yeah. So, but that's, this the, way, a, that's a, the way it this is. This time, I'm definitely a lot more focused on hanging out with, uh, you know, uh, some of the people that are coming. But I will I will certainly, you know, take some time for anybody that wants to chat with me. Yep. Zoom, that's Pandora Blue. Zoom, where'd Fresh go? He's gone. There's Blue what, Pandora, Porn, Pandora Blue's here again? Where's Gizzard Stew? Where's Lifa? Son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, there's Yeti's uncle hobbling away. There we go. There we go. That's where they're, okay. That's where they're all going. Yep. Well, I'm gonna hang. I'm gonna hang out with Eddie Tooney, guys. Where? Wait a minute. Where'd Eddie Tooney go? <laughs> He's with Ren. I'm, I'm hanging out with Mrs. Tooney and Ren. I'm perfectly <laughs> fine with this. <laughs> so it's nine oh four. We're gonna finish up the show, everybody. Um, first of all. Addy Tooney, thank you so much for everything you bring to this community. Wow. All the love, the selflessness, the fucking the DIY help, all your things you offer on all the shows. Also for the Addy Tooney K Fund, which will forever be loved by many, sought after <laughs> by everyone, and uh, as it should be. And um, also fresh, thank you because this show wouldn't be here without you. And for all the all the free free knowledge you give, that is pretty much invaluable to the community i mean nobody does it better than you as far as giving so thank you i appreciate that that's it's on an epic what i'm level. all about so it's what i try and do i try and infect people with my epidemic of giving yep it's a good thing to give the world yes and also thanks for having me on and i love you too brian I love you too <laughs> man and also thank you guys that are watching because without you watching there wouldn't be a show and I guess it would be still awesome hanging out with these two amazing gentlemen, but the community is where it's at. There's a lot of people out there that we were talking about tonight. Um, and this was just, I guess, a gratitude show and also a celebration of Addy and, and a celebration of fresh and, and really, uh, what this weekend will be about for them in Detroit and also what everything is about that, that gives us the joy, which is spending time with each other. Yep. That's what it's all about. So anyway, hang out, mixing up some tasty shit. Yep, mixing up some tasty shit. So we will see you, uh, fresh. Are you going to be back for next week's show? I will not. Okay, I will so still. I will. I will be on a. I will be on a a uh, bus coming down when the show's on. Um, so I will not be. I will not be available for next week's okay. show. Okay. So we will have a one week hiatus because this show without fresh is not a show because it is called Fresh from the Kitchen, and uh, yeah. We'll see you guys in two weeks, and uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Anything else, Adam? Anything thanks, late? Guys. Yeah, Anything? fresh in the kitchen with Mark Fagan. <laughs> that would be unfresh in the kitchen with Mark Fagan. <laughs> that would be fresh from the toilet with a fat chat. <laughs> Man, All that right. dude's got some gas. Thanks, guys. Love you. Bye, everybody. Bye. I need to have to use my secret, super, secret code word. <laughs>